So good morning. Um, I will talk a little bit about the uh, list of good practices that is one of the other tasks of this project I told you about and how they are being indexed so that we can think whether we could eventually accommodate the, uh, uh, the initiatives we know from our own countries within those dimensions. So, well, what is this? What are the aims to have these good practices? Well, it's to improve the workplace environment. Usually, in, in many cases, it's women who push for these changes, but improving the workplace is good for everybody eventually. And to allow, for example, things that women usually ask for is to have a, be able to make compatible personal life and work. Then also there are all these unconscious biases that uh, make people who evaluate other people um, ask more from women than from men without realizing that they do that. Or, I don't know, don't, uh, sometimes the work of women is not recognized uh, as well as it is for men. And so there are things you can do to try to decrease those biases. Then to value different types of contributions, uh, not just like we were talking, not just the uh, usual type of research, but also popularization of science and other things that are necessary for the activity, for the scientific activity. Um, and to transform the practice of science in something more di diverse, in the sense that not to repeat always the same patterns of behavior, and not, not that anybody, I mean that everybody that reaches the highest positions, it's because they follow a similar path, but you could promote various paths. To change perception so that uh, people from outside the academic realm perceive scientists in a different way. They don't associate them with the standard Einstein-like picture of a scientist that is perpetuated even today with the Big Bang Theory thing where the physicist is a, is a nerd. Also to help women advance in their careers and to end violence, discrimination, harassment, well, and other things that you might want to add to this list. So this is multiple dimensions, as you may see, and multiple actors. It's institutions, it's people, it's society, many things, many different things. International scientific unions is one thing that it matters to us within the project because the project involves these unions, what these unions can do to promote a change in the workplace environment, for example. Also, the uh, scientific societies at the country level, uh, institutions where research is done and also where is taught, I mean, universities, Funding agencies, companies, government. We've been discussing this in the first workshop. Uh, the academic community, ONGs, foundations, the edu education system at all levels, because to change the perception of who does science, it's good that kids perceive that from the uh, early stages in their education. I think you were talking, I, I don't know who was talking about this study that was published in Science two or three years ago, that um, they did this test with kids, it was US kids, middle class, white, but anyway, uh, that were from four through six years old, and to the four year old kids, they showed, they talked about, they told them a story, and the story had a hero. With English, it's 
you is good because you don't have a gender attached to the uh, to the words in most cases a different in the way you mentioned the word depending on gender so it's easier to do that and that it was a very powerful and smart person and so then the uh, I never gave a name to to this hero and so they asked kids to choose from a set of pictures who they thought this hero was. And girls tended to choose their own gender as the hero. And boys tended to, you, to choose their own gender as well. So girls chose girls and boys chose boys. But then uh, those, that was for four-year-old kids. And then for five or six-year-old kids, when they repeated the experiment, girls started to choose boys more often. So they were asking, is it the school that is putting this new chip into girls' minds? So that at the beginning, they, they tended to choose someone that was like her, theirs, and then they, they chose the other, I mean, boys as smart. While if they, they asked them to choose someone that was good and nice and caring, then they they chose girls at that age. So stereotypes are built quite early in, at least that test shows that, and schools play a major role in doing that. So the education system at all, at all levels is a target to change this, these stereotypes. Present social media, and so it's useful to have the the information on, on the initiatives that have been taken in different countries organized in a common place so that you can go and try to see what you can do in your own place, try to copy things or adapt them to your own reality. Uh, now, of course, this information is going to be good if we can influence on those who make decisions, but also on the uh, culture of uh, our workplace. So it's a different levels that we can influence here. Okay, so one of the tasks of the gender gap was to put together these initiatives. Um, they were organized. The database is still not available as a database. My wish is to have then the, the software so that we can use it for our purposes. And these are the dimensions that they chose. And this is a table I will show, show you again later because it says how many initiatives they found that they could tag within those seven dimensions. So social norms and stereotypes, initiatives to try to change that, uh, initiatives that try to target primary and secondary education, higher education, career progression, research content, practice and agendas. That's what Alice was talking yesterday this idea that in, in many disciplines, you should take into account gender or sex differences within your object of study. And this is uh, worldwide. This is a, oh, you, you were not here when yesterday, I think, when I, I gave the introduction of the project. This is a project that we presented together with it's 11 partners, mostly it's international scientific unions, the International Mathematical Union, the chemistry, physics, astronomy, biology, etc. And we got a grant from the International Science Council, and the project has three tasks. And one of the tasks is to produce this database. And so the people that were in charge, I was in, in charge of the uh, survey, and well, Laura, that yesterday told all the, the data, um, not, it was not only me in charge, I was as part of the IUPAP, which is a physics team, we were in charge of the survey, and the uh, American Institute of Physics Statistical Research Center, they carried out the survey, analyzed it, hosted the, uh, the questionnaire and all the responses as well. So, and the people in charge of, the, of this task they were coordinated by a person who is in math education. Her name is Marilyn Goss, or I don't remember the last name very well. Um, and so they, they decided to produce this, these seven dimensions and organize this database. Limitation is that uh, it's in English. That's huge limitation. So 
basically for us in our countries, we could use the dimensions, we could use the organization of the database, but we should have to fill it out with our own initiatives and think if we want some other dimensions like intersectionality with other aspects, uh, in particular race or I don't know, I don't know. Uh, well, policy making processes, entrepreneurship and innovation. And the International Mathematical Union will host the database when, once it's finished. This is, everything is finishing now in November that we have a, f a final meeting where we close the project. And so by then we should have the final reports on the uh, website and also the database in this IMU site. And from the, all the international unions, we will point to that site. Okay, so uh, these are a little bit of more detail about all these dimensions. Uh, the one that, dimension one, which is change perceptions, attitudes, behaviors, social norms, and stereotypes towards women in STEM in society. And so these are some of the, uh, the ways uh, in which, I mean, initiatives that tend to promote these things that are listed there, that those items, uh, then are cataloged within this uh, dimension one. For example, those that seek to promote awareness of and overcome non-conscious and cultural gender biases, and then those that promote visibility of women with STEM qualifications and in STEM careers. Uh, then mainstream, those that try to mainstream gender perspectives in science communication and informal and non-formal STEM education. Uh, those that seek to promote strategies that engage families and communities. And those that promote strategies that engage females in a community to develop scientific literacy and knowledge of social scientific issues. They were quite broad, but we can think of, I don't know, other things. Um, this dimension two, uh, engage girls and young women in STEM primary and secondary education as well as in technical and vocational education and training. And so these are initiatives that try to promote science and education vocations to girls and young women, including stimulating inter interest in about science and education, those that mainstream the gender perspective in the educational content, those that promote gender sensitive pedagogical approaches to STEM teaching, those that promote gender balance among STEM teachers, those that promote gender equality in STEM school to work transitions, mentoring of young girls by higher education or career STEM professionals. So all these things also give you ideas of things that you would, could wish to promote. Those that promote workshops that develop females' confidence and other skills. Uh, those that promote equal access to subjects in schools. That is something that happens in uh, Anglo-Saxon, I would say, where the curriculum of schools is free, uh, more free than in our schools, I think. Those that promote networks of female students. And by the way, this is secondary. Well, but you can go to higher education as well. Uh, this is in higher education, and regarding higher education, I was told that in the U.S. there is this uh, network of women in physics students that they do these meetings, and sometimes they do meetings simultaneously in various places of the country, and then they have one activity that is shared online at the, simultaneously at all the places, which is an interesting thing to think of, that to connect when you have a large country. Uh, well, these are all the, uh, the things that are within this dimension. Uh, promote recruitment initiatives uh, to get more women into, into higher education. Prevent gender bias in the student admission and the uh, financial aid processes. Promote retention of women in STEM higher education prevent gender-based discrimination and sexual harassment at all levels, promote gender equality in international mobility of students, 
promote daycare, childcare facilities for students, promote mentoring of higher education students, strategies that aim to develop female confidence and other skills also here, training to undergraduates in outreach and advocacy in promoting STEM education so that more women are role models for kids, more women in STEM, provide career information to graduate students. Um, then in career progress, uh, progression, ensure gender equality in access to job opportunities, recruitment, uh, promote equal work conditions, ensure gender equality in access to, to opportunities, promote work-life balance, gender equality in international mobility and facilitate women's return. Uh, this women's return thing, that's an interesting thing. There are many initiatives uh, I knew one in the UK and then also in the US, which is a fellowship for women who had quit the uh, scientific career, usually because of having a kid. And she wants to go back to the scientific career, so she gets a five-year grant. And in that time, to cover her salary and also her research. And in that time, she should kind of uh, be able to get back into business and then eventually get another type of job. Um, promote gender balance in leadership positions. That's something that sometimes is complicated because some women are called to be on so many committees and because there are fewer women and we want to promote women to into these higher positions and sometimes there are not so many women so but it's good to have them anyway uh, promote transformations uh, of institutions and organizations aimed at achieving gender equality uh, ensure equality in professional certifications promote mentoring gender representation bias training that's an interesting thing to train those that are in positions of decision-making positions, like directors or members of committees. And so they are trained before they start their work on try to avoid these biases. Uh, promote initiatives that increase female STEM networks, scholarships at professional level, industry skill sets, female networks. And then this is more a, this idea of the gendered innovations of Londa Schiebinger that Alice was talking about yesterday, which is, well, on one hand, having some research programs that look at this issue of gender in science, but also incorporate gender dimensions, well, into the evaluation. Uh, that's when some funding agencies require to have some gender balance among the members of teams or to, pro to fund some types of projects or to fund activities. Uh, for example, in Argentina, Connie said now, requires that in conferences there should be some balance in gender among speakers and organizers, and if that's not uh, achieved, then they don't get the funding from Connie then promote gender responsive and gender sensitive research dissemination, but also uh, gender sensitive analysis in research hypotheses and consideration of sex of research subjects. And then the sixth is ensure gender balance in STEM related policy design and gender mainstreaming and prioritization of gender equality in STEM related policy design. And finally, uh, also in technology, which is kind of the most difficult for us to reach because it's, we are mostly in academics. And so promote equality, gender equality in access to seed capital, to ensure access to public support for innovation for women-owned firms, visibility of women entrepreneurs as role models, women's access to mentorship and participation in the design, and implementation of gender sensitive training in entrepreneurship, innovation, etc. Uh, promote networks of women entrepreneurs and 
participation in these networks, gendered innovation approaches, ex external incentives and recognition for women-led innovation, gender equality in the access and use of enabling technology, and then a gender-balanced workforce and equal opportunities in startup companies. And as Marcia said, in companies that have women on their boards, they do better financially. Anyway, so this is the statistics of the initiatives they found, how many they are going to be in the database, or they are so far, uh, depending on the dimensions. And the main limitation is that they are all in English. In any case, um, they, are, uh, they are from many regions in the world, almost all regions, these large regions in, into which we divided the analysis. There is at least one per region. And the other thing that they found about many of these initiatives, that very few of them had evaluated the impact of the initiative. And they were saying, if you don't know whether it was uh, what it produced, what changes this initiative produced, then it's hard to decide whether you want to keep on doing that or replicate that in other, in other places. So it's very few of the initiatives that measured their impact and even fewer that plan to do it anyway. So um, here is the list that I had collected, which is not organized in these dimensions. If I have then the uh, software, I, I will do. And um, this is the website. Um, many of the initiatives that come from Latin America are related to gender violence, I would say. And I would like you to help me increase this and try to make this into, say, which dimensions of the seven dimensions they cover. And one thing that I was thinking was whether we could have a scheme similar to, someone to, talked about this, which is a scheme in which institutions, uh, there is the, uh, they talked about the Athena Swan program, which is similar to this Juno project, that what they do, the, the Juno project is for physics departments, um, is to recognize and reward departments that can demonstrate they have taken action to address the underrepresentation of women in university physics. And so there are three levels of awards. And the institutions have to apply to get this award. And the, the project is, uh, establishes the aims, and institutions have to discuss within their own communities how they are going to achieve those aims. So it's not only the award that is important, but also all the discussion, because if you get most people engaged in the discussion, then that helps change the culture. That's very important. So these are the principles. Um, I will just put them without reading because I am running out of time, I think, but you will have it. And they added in 2017 the, something about harassment and violence violence, which they didn't have. And um, so one thing that they, prom they promote is gender awareness in the training of all the staff, promotion of inclusive social activities and opportunities for mutual support and interaction. So there are lots of things to change the local culture that are proposed. Inclusive images and internal and external communications support female seminar speakers, some, some of the recommendations they give, and also uh, recognize the full range of types of, of contributions that I told you about. And the Athena Swan is pretty similar, but it, it embraces more fields, not just physics. And the Athena Swan now, uh, some of the funding agencies in the UK require that the institutions have one of the be certified by the Athena Swan project to be able to get the funds. So, so I was thinking whether we could have something similar in our countries, like some evaluation, some program that could evaluate institutions and promote the discussion within the institutions, basically. So not to, to say you have to do this or that. It's just to say we would like you to try to achieve these goals and you discuss how you would, what you would do to achieve those goals. Anyway, so thank you.
Hola. Eh, yo tengo varias preguntas y comentarios. Eh, no me quedó claro eh, este proyecto que tú muestras, eh, ¿dónde, eh, ¿de dónde son las estadísticas? Sí. Can everybody understood? Do you want me to say in Spanish? You prefer in Spanish? Uh, she said she asked where the statistics came from because it was not clear to her. So the, uh, those numbers of initiatives. Mm -hmm. This is part of this international project that ah, had three okay. tasks. So one of the tasks is to produce the database. So what they did was surface. I mean, go through the web and looked for initiatives, searching but it's only in English, as I told you. And so, and then they, once they found an initiative, they put a dimension, at least one dimension per initiative, because some initiatives enter into more than one category of the database. And then they counted how many they had for each of those dimensions. That's the thing. I, I didn't write here from which countries, but the, the statistics about the countries, they, we have to, I don't remember. And, but there are lots in Europe, in the U.S., and English-speaking countries mostly. Okay. Eh, y la otra eh, comentario. Hay una iniciativa, una fundación de hecho que se llama Girls in Tech. Y, ¿Qué no, se llama cómo? Girls in Tech. Y no sé si está en todos los países acá en Latinoamérica. Al menos en Chile eh, está Girls in Tech Chile y se encargan de enseñar. Eh, Ciencias de la computación a, a niñas, a niña, les enseñan a programar, machine learning, e incluso eh, tienen un proyecto que si uno cambia tu computador personal, lo puedes donar y si tiene alguna falla ahí lo reparan y lo donan a niñas de escasos recursos para, porque le enseñan a programar ya que se motiven con las ciencias de la, de so, la computación. Everybody mm. understood the... Uh, ok. Uh, yeah, in, in Argentina we have chicas en tecnología. Sí. And one no of the things si that they do is to promote that girls code. Mm -hmm. So they teach how to code and they teach how to code and I don't know, I mm -hmm. guess they do some summer camps or something or whatever, mm -hmm. some activities for girls to code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 The, uh, the language, uh, programming language are uh, hyphen, yeah, ladies. And has, uh, it was founded by a Brazilian girl in the USA. So they have different groups uh, around the world to support the learning and empowering women in this, uh, using this language. What, which? Python, Python, Python. Yeah. Python. Python. and ladies. Yeah. No, 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 not Python. Oh. Lady. Pi ladies. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Más fácil. Here. Sí. So just one comment about the um, fellowships that you told about uh, for women that quit science for a little bit when they have kids. So it's for anything, actually. Sorry? Because it's for a career break for any reason. They don't ask. Okay. You just apply for the grant with the project. Okay. So in the case of neuroscience, there is um, some organization that gives this kind of uh, fellowships. And the, um, they require that you have to quit uh, science for, I don't know, two years. Mm. It was related with kids. And I, I applied, of course, because I had kids, and I, I said, that, well, that, this is great. Uh, but the thing is that I hadn't quit science because it's very difficult to quit. I mean, if you are doing a PhD, you, have, you can take three months uh, away and to have your child, and then you go back as you can, I mean, with the help that you have, and but you keep doing science in very and difficult... Informa. Yes, and yes, way. and you struggle, and then you work at crazy hours because you have to continue uh, immersed, to be immersed in this crazy system. Uh, so I thought that, well, maybe some women uh, can quit science for a bit, but I know many others that cannot quit science. Uh, so 
what about those women? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that. So it was the, a little bit you're you're unfair. talking about peop, uh, women who would slow down because of yes. having kids, I mean, but not yes. completely quit. I don't know yeah. how they check about that. Of course, when they create these programs, they are very cultural related. Yeah. And this was born in the UK where many women just go, I mean, quit the, the sub subject completely and eventually think that they want to go back or they wanted to attract them back into science. And so it's very cultural dependent, I think. And so we could, I don't know of any a initiative to, I don't know, help women who slow down, yeah, like I mean, specifically for yeah. that. What, what I know is that in evaluation committees, you, uh, you are requested not to take into account the years that the person yes. uh, has been having kids or something like that, so that you should evaluate kind of crossing out some years of your trajectory. But other than that, I don't know, specific grant to re-entry after slowdown. Uh, hi, I don't know if you mentioned, and I didn't understood, but you said about that a lot of initi initiatives didn't, didn't measure the impact. And I don't really know how we could measure this kind of impact after the initiative. Well, if you have, if you have a goal, because uh, you say, I want to promote, well, some activities, uh, you can say, I want to, I don't know, change stereotypes of things like that. That's a mm -hmm. little hard to measure because you would have to do some tests before you start the initiative and then see how the perception is changed mm -hmm. over time. But then if you say, I'm going to promote having a more gender balance, in committees or things like that, you can measure that. You can see whether the uh, fraction of women on committees was such and such before the initiative and then that changed. So some things are more quantitative, which you can measure. Others that are more, I don't know, it's that are harder to quantitate, then it's more difficult. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, so about these initiatives for people who slow down, uh, at the university where I did my PhD in Switzerland, they had... Uh, which is, is which, which one? Uh, university of Geneva in Switzerland. Uh, they had a, a special program that they called Subsid Tremplin, uh, which you could translate to uh, trampoline subsidy, something mm -hmm. like that, uh, that was meant to help uh, women who uh, had uh, some um, um, anything that had made them a little bit less productive than men. Okay, so, so it's if not you a were a young, break. Wim, a okay. young woman in your um, professor, starting professor career, and you had a project, you could apply. I okay. mean, it could have been anything, but you know okay. that there are so many what, what's, systems. What's the, it was in French, you said. I didn't. Subsid tremplin. Okay, subsid, and then? Tremplin. T R E M P L I N. L I N. Like that? Pues, sí. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Ask more questions? Okay, Come so um, we will now, Hel Elena Nussenzweig was supposed to give the talk. And she couldn't make it because of weather conditions. She couldn't fly into Sao Paulo yesterday. So we will have her on Zoom. Yeah. Is that yes. right? Uh, Is she there? Yeah, let's Good. Just check this. Yes. Yeah. Um, and by the way, uh, those of you who were supposed to give talks tomorrow, who volunteers to give a talk today in the evening, so that tomorrow we finish by lunch. If you don't do, then we throw chalks to you. <laughs> Veronica, Veronica. Okay, Maria Luisa, puedes? Hoy, para hablar hoy, para hablar hoy en lugar de mañana. Sí? Sí. 